peeps. Welcome back to the show. And uh, if I look a little bit pale, that's because I just ran two miles in 30 minutes. And I know for that, for some people, that is uh, nothing. But to me, that is a lot because I've never been a runner. Basically, what I'm doing is I am training for some marathons, be running October, November, and December. And I'm going to be doing those. I'm going to be running those with my wife, do an activity together and have some fun and uh, stay healthy. So I had to start jogging, right? I had to start running and, and getting conditioning. And I'm, I'm in pretty good shape because I ran the two miles straight without stopping. I did not lose my breath. I was, uh, I didn't want to faint or any of that. I figured I was going to have to stop after a mile, but I kept running and I just got to keep running every day, do a couple miles every day or a mile every day. And uh, that way I can build up conditioning so I can run the 5k. I'm not going to run a 10, a 10k because I don't want to put my body through that. A 5k is fine for me. As long as I'm out there, I'm running, having fun and, and spending time with my wife. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. That leads to this topic for this podcast is finding the motivation to to work out. And that's what I want to talk about is finding the motivation to work out is very, very difficult. I myself, how I, I think I said it a bunch of times, I myself uh, always been an athlete and I've always I'm always on the go. I'm nonstop. I'm always on the go. And even for myself, just for the workload and going to work every day and just a da daily life. It's very difficult because it just seems like you don't have enough time to get anything accomplished, right? So by the time you get home, you just want to rest, take your shoes off and just relax. And uh, the motivation is gone, right? So I basically drive an hour to work and an hour back. And by the time I get home at 630, I am completely exhausted. I still have to eat. So it just makes it very, very difficult. And what may, when I do most of my working out and my training is during the weekends because I don't have to go to work. So I can at least, uh, well, I don't have to go to work all the time, but at least uh, on some weekends where I'm home, I can, I can do some training and, uh, doing the podcast and working and all that, it takes a lot of time. So you focus more on other things. For instance, I'm completely, my focus is all on my podcasting, right. And trying to figure out some things that we're working on and, and, uh, trying to get some dates correct and, and the guests going, just trying to get you know everybody in the same page and you kind of lose track of your health and uh, it's very important that you figure out a happy medium right and and for me it's you know just because i've been athletic my whole life and always worked out and have all kinds of energy it doesn't mean that i that i have all this motivation in the world is i don't have i sometimes i just don't have it and it's really hard for me to work out it's really hard for me to get going and but you know what i just watched that's why i told my wife it's like let's do some marathons that way I, I I'm forced myself to to run and to get conditioning. That way I don't go out and run them and I just pass out and die. So how am I gonna do that? It's by going and doing these marathons and I know that I have to I know that I have to be have some kind of conditioning to finish them, right? Because I want to finish them. I just don't want to show up to the race and not finish them and just be like, I can't do this. Let's go home. So I mean that would be embarrassing, right? So the motivation that I didn't have a whole lot of motivation, you know, because I'm, like I said, I've been focused on the podcast and all this stuff and trying to get back on, trying to get, trying to, trying to do this is very, very hard. I mean, I had to go buy some running shoes because you don't want to run on just shoes that you wear every day. That's something that I've learned when I was going to school. So I've been a mechanic my whole life. That was my career. I went to school to be a mechanic and I've been a mechanic my whole life. However, I did study another profession and I decided to I, I always wanted to do it because, like I said, I was an athlete and I always wanted to find out how people got injured. How did they how did they get out of injury? How do what do they do when they're injured and all those stuff? And I wanted to learn the body and uh, I decided to go to school for sports and rehabilitation. So basically I took therapy, massage therapy, uh, kinesio taping, all that stuff, right, for injuries. And and they, they teach you about, the uh, you know, MCLs and and ACLs. And you hear a lot of like on the. NFL, right? Oh, he has an ACL injury, an MCL injury. And I, I didn't know what that was. I was like, what is that? What are all these injuries? And uh, I always wanted to figure out what it was. So I went to school for that. 
I went to school and I, I, I just didn't, I didn't want to make it a career. I just went to school because I wanted to finish something. I wanted to finish something else instead of just being a mechanic. I just wanted to have it under my belt. And I did work at a few places, few uh, physical therapy places and stuff like that. It was it was OK. It was fun. Um, I didn't do it for that long. I just it was basically I wanted to try it to see what it see what it was to work with these kinds of people. Right. Like uh, sports guy, uh, people that get injured in accidents or ex athletes that or, or runners or just regular the regular folks. Right. That are just athletic and they run and they do exercise, but they get injured. So. My teachers were, the teachers that teach the classes are doctors. One of the doctors was a big time runner and uh, he was, I believe, I'm, I don't know if I'm, it's an orthopedic doctor, the the people that deal with the feet and all that. And I think that's what it is. Hopefully it's right or I'm going to look stupid. But this guy t- told us that if you're going to run to use the proper shoes, like I was saying, if you are going to run to have a pair of running shoes just to run, don't use them on your regular day basis because of the way you walk is different than the way you run. So when you run with the shoes that you wear every day, you're going to hurt. You're going to you might have some knee problems, some leg problems, some pain, some aches. So I went and bought some running shoes, right? Because I need to I need to start running because I didn't have any running shoes. So I put them on and I go back on the on the treadmill and even with the shoes i just didn't have any motivation i was like oh man i hate running that's one of the things i hate is i hate running i i just i just hate it i mean i'm okay playing basketball or sprinting and you know running but it's not like running marathons that is that is it takes a lot from you so i put the shoes on i got on the treadmill today and i did the two miles and man afterwards i was like oh my god my legs you know, my legs and I had to walk it around for a little bit, you know, and I, after walking around, I feel, I feel better, but I had to find that, that energy, that motivation. And after jumping on the treadmill and I didn't, I didn't run full speed. I was running about, I was jogging, right? Three and a half miles per hour. And I've went and I researched a bunch of YouTube videos on the proper way to run and how to run properly. So you don't hurt yourself. So as I'm running really slow, I'm trying to figure out, you know, the proper way to run so I don't get injured and you can last longer and you can run longer and all that kinds of stuff. But I was in the treadmill and I was like, man, I was looking down at the clock and I was like, oh my God, this is hard. Running is very hard. But I pulled it off. And you know what? Afterwards, I drank some electrolytes. I felt pretty good. I feel a lot better now because I just finished doing this. So now I'm doing the podcast and I feel great. I feel great, actually. Maybe tomorrow I'm not going to be able to walk, but I feel great. And that is the thing is we have to be able to push ourselves so we can work out. We have to be able to push ourselves to be healthy. It just you just have to go over, jump over that 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 obstacle, right? Just to jump over it, to be set free so you can continue, so you can find that extra motivation and just keep doing it, forcing yourself to do it and pushing yourself to do it. Tomorrow, maybe I'm going to be sore, won't be able to walk, but I'm going to push myself to run maybe another mile, an extra mile and just keep going. And just because afterwards you feel great, you're just like, oh, man, now I want to run. I I really like running all of a sudden. This is awesome. But it's just because you have all those endorphins and you're happy and you feel good. And I was proud of myself because I felt I was going to pass out running on the treadmill, but I was different. I was like, man, I did it. I can't believe I did it. Obviously, running inside the house at 78 degrees is different than running outside in Arizona at 115 degrees. But we're, that's why we're not going to run marathons in the summer. We're going to run them in the what we call here the winter, which is 80 degrees, 75 degrees. And it's nice and sunny outside and it's fresh because I don't know who can run marathons out here. I mean, this is ridiculous. Hikers die on a daily here, basically, almost. It's like people understand that it's 115 degrees outside and they still try to go hike a huge mountain in phoenix and they they die they find the bodies later and it's like well no shit you you can't just go out there it doesn't matter how much water you take just don't go out there when it's 115 degrees i mean at least go at six in the morning or something and and take some water and just do a little bit of hiking and come back don't go out there and try to hike mount everest out i mean it's it's ridiculous what people do but anyways so i i found a little bit of motivation i hope i can keep going the motivation can follow me for tomorrow 
but it's just letting you guys know that just because if you were an athlete or if you are always constantly working out, it doesn't mean that you always have motivation to do it. It just, it doesn't mean that because that is not true. You have to, in order to exercise, you have to really push through. You really have to push through mental, a lot of mental barriers because all we want to do is we want to lay down. And I talked about this on one of my, one of my episodes when I, I read the book on, um, I read this book called Can't Hurt Me by uh, David Goggins and I had an episode about it and I talk a lot about kind of this stuff, right? But now I'm doing it. Now I'm pushing myself to uh, go to work, do podcasting, take care of the family, yard work, this and that, regular day life, and now training for a marathon. And you just keep adding, adding more and more. And if if you're single and your life is just a little bit easier, it's still harder. If you don't have any responsibilities or you just maybe live at your parents' house and you just, that's it, you don't have kids and you just kind of work for a little bit and it's still hard. Working out is very hard for everybody. And the body, the mind, the brain doesn't want you to work out because it wants you to just watch TV. It doesn't want you to go out there and run 10 miles because that's, it's hard, right? The body wants to conserve you. And that's the way that a body thinks is that, well, I'm going to conserve him by making him lazy. So you have to push through that. Okay. Even with my high energy levels, because I have high energy levels. I wake up at 3.30 in the morning and I don't go to bed till 10.30 at night. For how long am I going to be doing this? I have no idea. I'm 40 years old and um, I have no idea how long I'm going to be able to keep doing this. But it also has a lot to do with how you eat, right? So if you're constantly eating heavy foods, pastas and stuff like that, you know, of course you're not going to want to work out. You're going to want to go to sleep. So what I do on the weekends is I basically do some intermittent fasting. So I don't, I just, I just drink some coffee and some power drinks maybe during the day and I eat one once a day. So I eat around seven o'clock at night, six thirty at night and I have one meal and that's all I do. And it's been working great because I'm, my weight is still at 200 pounds and I don't uh, fluctuate from 250 to 210 to nothing. It's the same weight all the time. And it's just, I'm just trying to keep myself healthy. I'm trying to, um, to better my life. Right. And when you work out and the more and more and more, it's, it's just easier. So for instance, for me that I never ran, that I never ran like this for somebody else that never works out, it's 10 times harder because they're not used to working out. Their body is not used to it. It's something called muscle memory that, uh, it's when the body understands that you basically you used to work out a lot and you stopped and then you start working out again and your your the muscle memory is there it knows what muscles to activate and all kinds of stuff you have to look into muscle memory but but people that have never worked out or are just getting into working out or they're not really physically active it's a hundred times harder to just jump in a treadmill and run two miles for me for people that are used to working out but i've never ran it's just a little bit easier because if you don't smoke and uh, you know you don't do any of that stuff where it affects your lungs and stuff like that, you can run. You can run. You can you maybe you can't run. It's not it's not a good thing to run ten miles if you never ran. Of course, you know I felt like I was only going to run a mile and I ended up running two miles and I had to stop myself because I'm like I I think I can do more than that. But I just warmed up and I got on the treadmill. I never actually ran like this before, so I didn't want to get injured. And me having a little bit of a background on sports and rehabilitation and all that, I I was like, I'm conscious of what I'm not supposed to be doing. So don't do that because I'm going to end up getting hurt. And if I get hurt, it affects my family life. It affects, it affects everything, right? Because what am I going to do? I can't work. How about if I don't have vacation or sick days or anything? What am I going to do being at home for a month because I tore one of my meniscus or one of my MCLs or stuff like that. So also, we also have to be conscious when you're trying to work out. Always start slow. Always start slow. But the most important thing is to get up and do it. Just get up and do it. Don't think about it. Get up, do it, put your sneakers on, lace them up, and just take off. It doesn't matter if you're in a treadmill or it doesn't matter if you're just running in your backyard or just walking on the track or walking outside. The toughest thing, the toughest thing is to put your shoes on, lace them up and go. That is once you get past that, once you put your gear on and you're out the door or you start the treadmill, you already made it really, really far. 
right? You're already there. Now you just got to run. Now you just got to walk. Now you just got to work out. Now you just got to be eat healthy. Now, I mean, all that, right? So that step, that, that next step that you have to take to get there is the most important step. But trying to get there is what is the hardest. So hopefully this, uh, you guys like this episode. Hopefully you guys uh, kind of get me, kind of get where I'm going. Uh, that it's not as easy as there's some people that are like, oh, this is super easy. I can do it all day. It's not as easy. Me being how I am, always active and 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 always playing sports and stuff like that. It's hard for me too. It's super hard. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I have to push myself to do it. So don't believe people that can be like, yeah, that's easy. Oh yeah, I can just rook it up and run and this and that. It's not true, people. It's not true. It it it. I'm sure this is for everybody that that uh that is normal, you know, that they don't play sports for a living. And I'm sure even the athletes that play sports for a living that are professionals, I'm sure it's sometimes they don't want to get up and do that either. So that being said, hopefully you guys uh, enjoy this topic. Hopefully I give you a little bit of motivation to get up and run, get up and do things, get up and work out, whatever it is, right? Get up and do your bed. I mean, just take the step, just do it and take the step and we'll be all right. So uh, September 16th was the Mexican independence day. And, uh, I uh, called up Mofo. We did an episode, and uh, it was it was great, right? We went a whole hour, and uh, after we were done, later on the night, I start editing the video, and it, the video is horrible. I screwed up. My camera was on out of focus. I had a big white square on my face, and just uh, the camera kept turning on and off during the podcast because I don't have a dummy battery on the on the camera, so I had to keep switching batteries. So it was horrible. However, I'm letting you guys know that because I'm going to be releasing that episode anyways after I'm done doing all the editing to the audio because the podcast was great. The flow of it, all the stuff that we were talking about, we get really deep into this podcast. And um, I'm telling you this because during the episode, I mentioned some things. For instance, my friends from the podcast, Two Mexicans in One Mic, sent me a cool t-shirt of them. And I sported, I I had it on and I was sporting it. And uh, at the beginning of the podcast, I'm like, hey, check out this T-shirt that my buddy sent me and this and that. And you're not going to see it. You're not going to see it because it's an audio. So if you're wondering, what the hell is this guy talking about? I don't even see anything. Why would he even say that if it's an audio? That's why. Because that that podcast that I'm, gonna, that I'm going to be uploading, it was meant to be a video podcast. But I talked it over with MoFo and the podcast was just so good. It's about religion and all kinds of different things. And uh, it was just so good that we didn't want to trash it. So we're going to just upload it as an audio uh, for everybody. And uh, so these, I decided to do a couple little different things here. So for the, for my solos on video, I'm just going to put those up as bonuses. I'm not going to put them as video exclusive. Video exclusives are only going to be when I'm with MoFo or the guests and stuff like that. But these, I'm it's just going to be bonus for everybody. And I'm going to upload it as as a video podcast for everybody to see so you guys can enjoy it. Uh, I want to give thanks to all the followers and uh, all my subscribers and everybody that supports the show. Thank you very much. Uh, everything, all the help, everything goes a long ways, trust me, especially when you're just starting on a podcast. So thank you very much for everything. Uh, I can be reached and uh, I'm on Instagram, on YouTube, TikTok. Twitter, everything is at Bold Talk by Joe. Also, I created an email. It's uh, Bold Talk by Joe at Proton.me. So that's Bold Talk by Joe at Proton, P R O T O N dot me. And if you're wondering what the hell website is this, Joe, this, what the hell are you trying to do? Don't worry. It's not a weird website. I was trying to find a secure website, something where it could be secure. So nobody, messes with the with the email this is a swiss company okay so i'm using them because their their laws and everything is is their privacy is completely different than we have here in the the united states and since i'm emailing different people every day for the shows and this and that i want it to be secure so don't be don't freak out it's not one of those weird websites that i'm gonna steal your information it's just for feedback you know Give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys you guys want something for me to talk about and explain or just you shoot me an email and I'll be more than happy to to talk about it or to answer the questions. I've done it before. I've had a bunch of episodes where some, uh, a few people have given me some 
they they're like hey what about this and that and i talked about it on the on the show so you know don't be afraid send me i'm really easy going i uh you know i'm easy to talk to just you know, however however you want to reach me at and at least now i have an email and that way you can uh i can you know you can reach me and ask me whatever you want to ask me so thank you for everything until next time peace